All right, guys, it's been a while since I did an update to the Texas toy. Um, I've done some updates on the Facebook page. I wanted to blow this update out to YouTube because I've got some good stuff to show you today. I want to thank everybody for hitting that like and subscribe button. If you haven't done it, please hit that subscribe button down in the bottom right-hand corner. It supports the build. It supports this whole project getting redone. Guys, it's really exciting. Um, so today after work, I swung by and I picked up the bed. Um, Pat Rath has done a really awesome job on it. We've got a really good looking blue on it. It may be one or two shades lighter than the original, but I really like this blue. I've seen it on these fleet side trucks, dent side trucks, sorry. And uh, it's just a color I really like, so wanted to pick it. So anyway. All right guys, so we got the roll bar in it. We've got the old Midcoast Diesel logos that were originally on the truck. Got it bed liner and they did a urethane coating over the bed liner. It's hard to see probably on the video, but guys in the sun, I mean, the, you can see the this thing has a lot of metallic flake in the paint. Came out really smooth. Looks really nice. And then we're gonna have a functional fuel door you notice here i did not put the fuel door in the front we got a bedside with one in the back so you will actually be able to fill the truck up from the fuel door back here these are new bedsides with a new tailgate and then did an over rail, over the rail liner custom tinning did that here in victoria texas did a really good job on it they put the bar in it for me and ordered that for me today also So the other thing is, I do have to apologize. If you notice in my shop, we've got a 14 foot door here on the end. Reason is, is uh, been driving the truck a little bit. Sorry, I haven't done any updates. I've just been really busy trying to get everything done on it. And you know, all the little, little leaks here and there, everything tied up. I've got maybe one or two more little leaks on the oil cooler I need to fix. But besides that, everything else is pretty much leak free. We've got the air conditioner in it, got it hooked up. It works great. Um, it's a, I think it's almost a, it's a 29,000. So it's almost a, it's between the two and a half ton. And it's like a 750 CFM. So it's not gonna keep it extremely cool, but I'm planning to insulate and do dynamat on the truck itself, on the body. So it might do pretty good. We've got the engine pretty sealed off. So we'll see how that does. So let's go take a look inside the shop and uh we'll show y'all what everything looks like that i've got done so far up to date while y'all are waiting on me to walk in open the door up i'll go ahead and do a couple clips of the truck running and i'm going to show you all those now
shop is a total mess. I have been, just got done putting the oil cooler back on and off of it again. Uh, had a small crack on it. So I've been working on getting some of that done. As you can see, got a little dirt on the tires. We've been out driving around. Um, if you look up here on the back, I know you've probably seen it on Facebook, but I did have to cut that guard down. So I still need to finish welding it out. That's why that diamond plate guard's not painted yet. I knew I was gonna have to cut it down so I'm gonna get the AC because if you look, this subframe lifts and I'm telling you, we barely clear those filter knobs. So I had to cut another two or three inches off the back of that so that when that cab lifts up, it'll clear past the AC unit. I did make the AC unit stationary because I didn't want to have to be messing with the hoses or for it to be moving up and down. It does have a filter on the back. It pulls from the back seat and then it has the vents on the top. The, um, it stays stationary. The guard, you do have to remove the two seats and the steering wheel to pull the engine guard. And the way I've designed it, it is a one piece but I have designed it where when the cab is tilted up, you can lift that engine guard up over the top and it'll actually slide up over the intakes so that you can work on the engine. I have been flushing the block. There's a couple of rust stains from the coolant. I'm about to clean that up. Um, when I pulled that oil cooler apart, I disturbed a bunch of, bunch of rust in the bottom of it. And then I tied down to the other head for the air compressor and there was a bunch of stuff in the head. So I've been doing a lot of flushing on it. So that's why you see some of the rust on the radiator. We'll get that cleaned up. You do notice we do have the air compressor mounted up here in the front. Just ran it off the crank, pretty much just slotted a piece of plate, went across the top of that, ran those hoses down the frame. Getting you know, kind of the ground level. There's a plate for that. I still need to hook up the two heater hoses for that and get a valve because I want to be able to turn it off in the summertime. I don't want to be heating that heater core up for no reason. But guys, let me crawl up here and I'll take, give you a look up top. All right, so one of the things you see here is if you're looking, I'm really trying to seal the truck off like I've said before. And if you look at this gap right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some diamond plate I'm gonna weld a piece of angle iron that's gonna come under here and we're gonna run a rubber seal. That way, that way when this closes, it's gonna seal up. It's not gonna be perfect, but I don't wanna see any daylight from inside the cab. I wanna really seal that off and make it give you that good closed in feel. When you come up top, you can tell I've built. So basically I put a little panel here for your ignition switch. This is your parking brake for the air parking brake. And the transmission has the option for manual or automatic shift. And the way this transmission is set up in automatic, it's pretty much wrapped out in every gear to make that shift. So it's very loud um, and it, it's set up to pull sleds. And so it's not shifting easy. It's not shifting at 1600, it's shifting at 2300. Um, so one of the reasons that I wanted this in here is I can flip it to automatic, you know, if we're doing a parade or we're doing something where we're not wanting it to be so loud and want it to be kind of quiet and just cruising. I can put it in first, second, or third, whatever gear I want, and not have to be in the throttle to get it to move because that first gear is a really slow crawl. <clears throat> so I put some supports in for the steering column, a lot better than what was in there before. We are not gonna use these gauges. I am actually gonna use the auto meter. Um, it's an LCD. It's about an eight inch, and you can put all your parameters in. I can put you know air pressure, trans temp, all the cinders, hook them up, speedometer, tachometer, all those good things. So my plan is, is let me get up here in the seat. I'll show you. I'm gonna pop the steering wheel off, get it out of the way. Okay, so the factory dash in that 78 Ford, if you look at my previous videos, I had it cut to where it's already cut out for this guard. It's gonna sit right on top of that. It's gonna come out probably to about right here. It's gonna go over the top of the steering column right here. And the very bottom of that dash, it's gonna sit right on the top of this almost flush when the cab is sitting down. And so what that's gonna do is, it's just gonna, this, like I said, this panel will look flush right here. And you'll be able, and, um, that's where you'll start and stop it. Because I didn't wanna be raising the cables and all the stuff with the cab. I'm trying to build all that stationary. And so once I get the cab back and I get it mounted, your instrument cluster is somewhere in this area right here. 
So I'm gonna cut that out of the dash and I'm gonna build a probably a carbon fiber instrument cluster for that display to go in and it's gonna sit right here perfectly. So the cab will actually come down on top of that carbon fiber and that way it can raise up and I won't have all the wiring. Pretty much the only wiring I'm gonna have in the cab is gonna be for the sound system and for all the lighting, clearance lights and uh, you know the LED lights. We're putting LED fog lights, LED tail lights and side markers and stuff like that. I am going red classic lenses. I just wanna use LED lights for low amperage draw because I am pulling a lot of amps, running the air conditioner, running the fans. Um, Guys, we're gonna have a fuel cooler back there. We just got a lot of stuff going on. So I do have a 200 amp alternator on here, but just trying to cover my basis on that. When you're sitting in the truck, you do have plenty of leg room. Um, the controls right here, once these will be cleaned up a little better too. I've got some 90s for the, the poly lines. But one of the reasons all this is it, you can take the, you can snap these poly lines out for the shifter. You can set this back and you can actually unscrew this. This is your rear steering right here. You can unscrew this and all these pieces will fold back and it makes it easy to take the guard off. The only thing you're seeing is a zip tie here. I'm ordering a red button for the blower flap. This is a two stroke. It is, not, I wouldn't say common, but it can happen that the fuel rack would stick and it would run away. You do have to have some access to trigger the flap. So right now I've got one of these large zip ties. I can grab it and trigger it if I were to need it in an emergency case. This is the shutdown runs to the governor. I just ran it straight through the plate right here. I put this plate on here also, so when I pull this, I can disconnect this, and I can also get in there and disconnect that blower flap cable when it's tied in. This is your AC unit right here. Pretty self-explanatory. It kicks on, runs fans up in the front. You hear the compressor kick on, you hear the fans come on. It's just cold, hot. Pretty simple setup. And you can see where I separated it right down there in the bottom. That's where I cut the guard down. I do have a little bit more tidying up to do. I mean, most of this right here, I've got most of the stuff tied up in the frame. I gotta do some more tying up on the fuel lines on the other side. This is just some extra wiring. I gotta get adjusted going up here to the cab and finish getting those heater hoses ran and get this plate on. Um, besides that, everything else for the most part is pretty much tied up and hooked up. I need to bolt that down for the remote steering, that, that hydraulic valve. Your two filters, your hydraulic can right there for hydraulic fluid, and then the diesel tank. I do have to drill a sending unit into that also. I've been out driving it. It does burn some fuel <clears throat> pretty quickly if you're uh, running it pretty hard. So. so again, I appreciate everyone watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. We're gonna get, I've got something going on this weekend. Get back, hopefully next weekend. I'll get that oil cooler little issues buttoned up, get the bed on it and get some stuff done to it. And then we'll start seeing some real progress on this thing. I've got to get this cover back off, get it welded out. I got to send it off to powder coat and then I've got to order some insulation for that. I'm going to put some cool mat on it. That's going to insulate the heat and some of the sound out of it. Um, still lots of little things to do, but overall I can fire the truck up. I can drive it out. Hopefully, like I said, next time, maybe next weekend, I'll get the GoPro on here. We'll take it out, give it a run and uh, show y'all what that looks like. Appreciate you watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. Catch y'all on the next update.